so uh, what I, actually before we start talking about the game, can you explain this wonderful diorama? Sure. Uh, a, f a few people have uh, kind of moderated it or, or uh, modified it a bit as it's been sitting here. It, it kind of grows, but uh, my original idea was actually to uh, to recreate the opening scene or the opening cinematic from Starcraft uh, Brood War, where they the end of this uh, that cinematic they had a whole bunch of zerglings coming in and the guys in the trench. Uh, one guy's like, "Where's the air support?" and this other guy's pointing up at the uh, battle cruiser flying up overhead. So just I'm a huge uh, Blizzard fanboy too. So uh, this having all the Lego here uh, gave me a good opportunity to start doing that stuff. And actually, a bunch of us have talked about we're going to try to build all of the original StarCraft uh, units and, and structures and stuff at some point, so we can have a big kind of battle game of of all of that stuff. So, Sweet. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, Mr. Krabs is is some sort of totem offering to the Zerg. Yeah, I know. People come in here. I mean, the ninjas and the pirates invade all the time. So, <laughs> it's a constantly shifting storyline that goes on there. Now you were saying earlier where you got uh, some of the figures or someone, you said someone had given you a couple of these? Yeah, one of the LUPs uh, uh, came out. We, we just had this event. Uh, a LUP is a LEGO Universe partner, so they're adult fans of LEGO. And uh, we're actually working with them. We've been working with them for almost two years now. Uh, we started with a group of about 50. It's up to, I think, 68 now. And it's going to continue to expand into the hundreds as time goes on. Uh, and it's a pretty unique thing that... Um, you know, most, most MMOs will bring in a community sort of at the end to beta test and stuff. We're actually bringing the fan community in to help develop along the way. So we're, we're, you know, we're building the official game and the official content, but these guys are getting access to all of the developer tools that we have. Uh, and we're training them on how we're doing it. And we're trying to uh, come to an understanding of how do you actually build LEGO models for the game itself. So one of the guys uh, that came out during the last event we had, uh, actually, we knew we have an you know, ongoing dialogue with the community. And he knew that a bunch of us were StarCraft players, and so he actually brought out uh, a bunch of the little uh, Terran Marine designs that uh, somebody had done online, and he built, I think, about 24 of them and brought them out as little gifts for us all, so it's really cool. Sweet. So uh, now, with the, the LUPS program, what, um, at this point, are they, they're not doing anything in-game. They're basically just giving you ideas for things that you guys might then take and turn into something in the game? Well, actually, we've brought them out to our offices twice. We had two big events. Uh, uh, one a year ago and one just at the end of June here in 2008. And so the, the first time we brought them out, it was really conceptual. We were just talking about, hey, here's what the game is going to be. And, you know, the game wasn't very far along at that point. Uh, but more to just try to get them thinking about the kinds of challenges we face uh, when you're building with LEGO virtually as opposed to in the real world. Uh, you know, polygon counts and performance, the things that matter on a computer in real-time simulation, right? Um, because that's definitely a different technique of building with LEGO than, than what they may be used to. Uh, the second time we brought them back, however, we had all of the tools up online, um, <clears throat> and the game had come a lot further, so we actually let them get hands-on. We gave them uh, a tutorial, a whole class session, uh, where 50 of them participated, and they got hands-on with a couple, of, uh, a couple of days of time to actually create stuff in the game. And from that, they went back home, and we've actually opened, opened up access to them, to our servers, so that they can actually... They, each of the teams of LUPS, in essence, has a map that they can uh, create their own stuff on. And so they're playing around with the tools right now, actually. Do, are you doing this just to, because you want to have um, you want to just see how they interact with it? Or are you hoping that they can sort of, as we've seen with Spore and, and maybe we'll see with Little Big Planet, you want them to sort of start, kickstart the, the universe when it comes to user-created content? Yeah, the hope is, I mean, that they're, first of all, heavily integrated with the development process so they can help guide you know, what does the community expect from this kind of a game? Uh, so we're making sure that we're making something that's really going to excite LEGO fans. Um, because the vision for this game really is a platform for them in the long run, right? In five to ten years' time, I hope 95% of the content that's in the game is actually coming from the community that they're building and inspiring each other, uh, you know, uh, and, and really connecting those, those people together. So um, as for our initial release plans, I mean, I, I certainly hope that it comes far enough along that we actually have some of their content to uh, to be in the game to start with. Um, how, how is development going right now? You guys still haven't announced any sort of hard dates. Um, where can you talk at all about where you are in the process? We're, so we are still looking at, uh, we're looking at 2009 for release. That's what our, our broad target right now. Uh, but I think uh, the progress is really great. Actually, we've had a really good quarter uh, this last release uh, that we're putting together. Actually, the final touches on right now. Uh, we do kind of quarterly updates to the to the releases. Um, it's been a really really good one. So uh, we're really kind of getting our our head around more what what is Lego play really. <clears throat> when you look at some of the other games that have come in the past, there's been 
you know, some pure Lego games and, and of course, the, the most recent uh, successful IP games that Traveler's Tales uh, has done, which are all fantastic games. I'm a huge fan of those. Um, but we're really trying to find something that is really core Lego play, right? It's not just about uh, an IP adventure or a directed adventure or something like that. How, what does it really mean to play with Lego in a virtual universe? And so we've, we've made some really good strides in that regard, and I think uh, a lot of people are pretty excited seeing where things are at right now. Um, you know, that's interesting. I think you and I, or maybe I was talking to Scott, we're talking about how perhaps because of the sort of scripted adventures and, and because of the IP that Lego itself has brought over to Legos, that there are a lot of kids now who um, I'm sure consciously realize it, but don't really realize that they can take apart those creations and do whatever they want with them. So are you hoping that this maybe uh, sort of in a uh, another way kickstarts in the physical world, people sort of playing around more with pieces instead of just doing what they're told when it comes to like building a, a Star, Star Wars spacecraft or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my hope would be that <clears throat> LEGO Universe kind of represents the way, just another way to play with LEGO going forward into the you know 21st century here. So uh, I definitely think it's going to inspire you to play more with the bricks on the floor or on your table at home. Uh, Physically and virtually, we we want to make some strong connections between those two as well. So, uh, but it's really just, <clears throat> you know, I I can just speak, I guess, for myself and and my own kid. I think when when we get in there and we look at stuff online and I show him the game, I always kind of take it home and let him play around with it and stuff. You know, it inspires you. You actually want to make things that you're seeing from a minifigs perspective. It's like, oh, that would be really cool to build, and you can do it right because you have the brick sitting there. So it is this really cool kind of back and forth uh, between the physical and the virtual world in that sense already. Um, now, with uh, with um, some of the other games you guys are developing here, I think you're taking a different approach to how you develop the game, the whole idea of trying to perfect the game as you go through instead of going back and polishing. Um, what process are you using here? Are you going to do that, or are you kind of, kind of following more of the traditional method of uh, development? Yeah, I think you're referring to what we always call the vertical slice sort of philosophy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're focusing really... Uh, strongly on <clears throat> the initial experience you're going to have in the game and making sure that it's as accessible as possible. I mean, this is for all NetDevil products, really. Uh, <clears throat> but really focusing on that initial experience, making sure the accessibility is there. You understand what you're doing. You know, why do you exist in whatever world that you're playing in? Um, is it fun, right? In your first five minutes, you should see, there should be a reason for you to come back and keep playing and, and uh, have additional play sessions, right?